Freedom of expression is the cornerstone of any free society. It's something that should always be cherished, respected and protected. Some people choose to write, some people choose to speak, some people choose one of the various arts in order to express themselves, but some people choose rather unusual methods. Methods that they're prepared to go to prison for. The Naked Rambler. Before we get into this mad lad, I actually have a sponsor. This hot, fat mobile game, Raid Shadow Legends, that all the cool kids are playing. If you don't play this game, then you aren't cool, sorry. The RPG has great graphics, strategic gameplay, huge boss fights and over 400 champions for you to collect. My favourite is Elaine. Because of reasons. Oh well, never mind then. The game is free to play and you will enjoy crazy battles and events that will keep you hooked immediately. If you click the links in the description you will get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion. So click the link. Click the link. Stephen Peter Goff was born on the 13th of May 1959 in Eastley, Hampshire. He is a former lorry driver and Royal Marine. But the key thing about Peter, the thing that he's really known for, is he is one of the world's most hardcore naturists, which means that whenever he travels anywhere, he travels completely naked. The only things that he would wear on his adventures would be boots, his rucksack full of supplies, and occasionally, a hat. He first came into the public eye in 2003 when he planned to walk the length of Britain from Land's End to John O'Groats completely naked and over the course of this journey he was arrested and imprisoned several times but finally managed to complete it in 2004 and believe it or not this first ever excursion of his was actually the least dramatic one. In 2005 he decided to do the same thing again, walk from Land's End to John O'Groats completely butt naked. Except this time he was accompanied by his girlfriend Melanie Roberts and they were also accompanied by a third gentleman who was a documentary filmmaker who planned to document the entire trip. And at the start of their journey they were completely surrounded by journalists and they ended up making nationwide news for attempting this trip again. The rules of the ramble were to only follow public footpaths even if those footpaths took them right through the middle of a city and even if they took them right past schools. Most of the places they went to, people just found it funny. People would laugh, clap, cheer, take pictures and see the humour in this spectacle. But a lot of people, I'm, I'm sure you'll be shocked to hear, were not happy at the fact that these two naked people were walking around. Me? You can't actually do this here, I'm afraid. No, you can't. I've got actually children, families here. Yeah. Uh, are they? Yeah. Is that a problem? Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Are you all then? All of us, please. I'd like to leave immediately. All right. There was another event when the group were walking by a cliff that a woman who was out walking seen these two naked people and was absolutely infuriated when the documentary filmmaker tried to step in and explain what was going on. She immediately started physically assaulting him and chasing him. Get off, will ya? The cameraman ended up having to run half a mile down the beach to escape from this crazy woman and he ended up having a few cuts and bruises from the attack. Melanie, Stephen's girlfriend, had only been with Stephen for a few months and despite this she still decided to accompany him on this trip and as a result had her naked body plastered all over national media which resulted in her very angry mother calling her during the trip and telling her how disgusted she was with her. She had sacrificed quite a bit in the name of love. And then, during the trip, 
when asked about his opinion on relationships, Stephen decided to drop this bombshell on her. So in a relationship, I believe that I want the other person to be free and I want me to be free to follow our spontaneous urges. And do you have a lot of spontaneous urges for different sorts of women? Um, <laughs> there has been as, as many as sort of five or something. But you're all right about him having sexual relations with five women? That's a lot, isn't it? I, I wouldn't... So Melanie thought that her and Stephen were in a relationship and then Stephen just blurts out that he doesn't believe in monogamy and he wants to sleep with other women. Despite the risks and sacrifices Melanie had made, Stephen just decided to not let her know this very crucial piece of information. This uh, resulted in an argument that continued for many miles into the trip. You're bad, way. It's about understand. It's understanding that I don't want to talk to you. The Can you imagine how awkward that cameraman must have felt? It wasn't all doom and gloom. When they were in the next town, Stephen stopped to ask for directions, and there was a funeral taking place next door. And a lot of the funeral goers came out and thought it was extremely funny to see Stephen standing there naked in the middle of the street. Uh, they actually appreciated it because they said it cheered everybody up. Shortly after this, another naked man, called Jeff, decided to accompany them on their adventure. But unfortunately, when they reached the next town, they again found themselves in trouble with the locals. I don't want to see you. You should have clothes on like everybody else. If you want to do that, you go and do it somewhere privately. It's out of line. It's pathetic. This made them a little bit nervous, so they decided to leave town so that they could continue on their journey. But... As they were trying to leave, it finally happened. We're walking and we're naked. Are you saying that the human body isn't decent? Sorry. No, Are you saying the human body? No, I'm, I'm quoting British law. No, you're not. I'm walking. I'm not arguing with you here and then, right? The gang were all arrested for breach of the peace and taken to the local police station. They had court the very next day, and Jeff and Melanie were waiting outside of the courthouse for Steve to be released. Due to disagreements between Jeff and Melanie, Jeff thought it would be best for him to leave the group and continue on his own. But as Jeff was walking away, you know, right in front of the courthouse, he decided that he would commit one final act of martyrdom. Don't take your trousers off. Oh no, Jeff. Pay respects to our fallen brother, comrades. A martyr for the cause. He went down the way he would have wanted to go down. Naked. Press F for Jeff, boys. Press F for Jeff. When Stephen was released from the courthouse, however, him and Melanie were put into a police van, and the police van actually dropped them off outside of the city and just let them go to continue on their journey. Then, after many miles, they finally crossed the Scottish border. And in true Scottish fashion, they were given a traditional Scottish welcome. What, were you not expecting that? Did you think we were going to be angry? Did you think we were going to shoot ourselves up with heroin and beat them up? Fucking racist. Unfortunately... Scotland is where Stephen would be facing most of his problems and most of his jail time. When they were just south of Edinburgh, Stephen and Melanie were, once again, grabbed by the police. Good afternoon. Can we speak Hiya. to you about it? Sure, yeah. Uh, I'm afraid at this point in time, I'm going to have to arrest you, okay, yeah. for, for a breach of the peace, okay? The next day, Melanie was released from the courthouse on the condition that she agreed to put clothes on. She was very upset by this and the angry members of the public who had gathered weren't exactly helping. Can you have some own clothes from the car? Fucking lost nice shit, innit? I'll you, get your clothes on! Melanie was told that if she got caught naked outside one more time, she would be going to prison. And so three months after starting her journey, Melanie decided to quit the walk and go home. The next week, Stephen was brought to trial in Edinburgh. 
And to everyone's shock and horror, especially the judges, Stephen appeared in the dock absolutely naked. The judge jailed him for two weeks. Stephen was released from prison and Melanie was actually waiting for him outside and to everyone's surprise, Stephen came out with clothes on and because they were clothed, the police allowed them to continue on their journey. But once he and Melanie were a safe distance outside of Edinburgh, they, they just got naked again <laughs> and just continued walking. They only had one town to make it through, Inverness. And if they could get through Inverness, then it was smooth sailing all the way to John O'Groats. And months after they set out, they could finally complete their journey. Go on, Stephen. You can do it. You've been walking for months. You've tried so hard. You've struggled. You've been jailed. You've been arrested. You've been mocked. You've been harassed. You can do it, Stephen. All of this hard work and effort is about to pay off. You can do it, Stephen. I believe in you. Well, fuck. Stephen was taken back to jail, and when he was about to be released from this sentence, he stood at the gates, naked. He was told by the guards releasing him, and the police standing outside, that if he set foot outside of those gates naked, he would immediately be re-arrested. Stephen refused to comply, and walked out the gates naked. He was immediately grabbed by the police, and was given another three months in prison. When Stephen was released from this sentence, he again attempted to leave naked, but the guards and the police just went, fuck it, fuck it, just let him go. Fuck it, just let him go. Once Stephen was released from this sentence, he met up with Melanie, and they continued on their journey, and then finally, in February of 2006, they made it to John O'Groats and completed their journey. However, this was not the end of Stephen's problems with the police. This was merely the beginning of a long-running trend where Stephen would constantly be arrested for refusing to put clothes on. In August of 2006, Stephen was arrested for stripping completely naked on a flight from Southampton to Edinburgh, and he was given a seven-month sentence for this, but he got another three months added on because throughout the entire trial, Stephen refused to put clothes on, and so every time he appeared in court, he appeared completely naked. The problem was, when Stephen was released from this sentence, he left the prison naked, so he was immediately re-arrested and sentenced to prison again. Then when he was released from this sentence, he tried to leave the prison naked again, was re-arrested again, and sentenced to more jail time. This just started an endless cycle. Every time he got released from prison, he would leave naked, get re-arrested, sent back to prison, then leave naked, re-arrested, sent back to prison, leave naked, re-arrested, sent back to prison, over and over and over again. This happened so many times. In 2008, a judge sought to end the cycle and told Stephen that if he went three months without being arrested for being naked, then all of the charges against him, of which there were many, would all be dropped and he would not be sent back to prison. A literal get out of jail free card. And not only that, all of his past offences would be forgiven. That is a damn good offer to get from a judge. Judges almost never do that. You would be stupid not to jump at that chance. So what did Stephen do? He left the courthouse naked and was immediately re-arrested like, like 10 minutes after the judge said this to him. And so the cycle just started again. Released naked, re-arrested, prison, over and over and over again. And he would also get more time added to his sentences because every time he appeared in court, he appeared naked. I mean, say, say what you will about the man, but god damn is he fucking dedicated. Stephen's sentences add up to a total of almost nine years with little specks of freedom dotted throughout for those precious 30 seconds of freedom he had at a time in the prison car park before he was immediately re-arrested and sent back to prison. And it was just a constant cycle of this over and over from 2006 to 2016. During his imprisonment, a lot of freedom of expression groups, nudist groups and even human rights groups 
criticised the government very heavily for the way they had treated Stephen. And the main thing they were pointing out is that Stephen spent most of these sentences in solitary confinement. There was a massive public outcry because even though people didn't like what Stephen was doing, they found the treatment he was getting to be very extreme. And they were even more pissed off when they found out that constantly putting Stephen on trial and sending him to prison over and over again had actually cost the taxpayer over £330,000. People who wanted to show solidarity with Stephen even staged nude protests all around the country and Stephen's plight actually attracted more people to the nudist movement because so many of them seen him as a prisoner of conscience. But finally, in 2016, Stephen was released and he left the prison with clothes on. He went against the very thing he believed in, the very thing he was fighting for, the very thing he spent nearly a decade of his life in prison for, but he didn't get attacked for this. He actually had a very good reason. His mother had been diagnosed with dementia and she was getting worse and she could no longer take care of herself without help and Stephen was fearful that he wouldn't be there to take care of her when she needed him the most and also he might not be there to be with her when she passes. So Stephen, fearful of that, put clothes on so that he could be released from prison and go be with his mother to take care of her and be there for her. I completely respect that. I, I completely get that. I, I can't for one second hold that against him. And that is where Stephen has been since 2016, taking care of his elderly mother, and we haven't heard a peep out of him since. But it does make me think, when his mum does pass away, will we be seeing more of Stephen? Maybe a little bit more than we'd like to see. It is extremely strange, wanting to travel everywhere naked. Especially in British weather where you might freeze to death. It's a form of expression that I don't really understand, but Stephen does a pretty good job of explaining why he does what he does. What I'm doing is asking a lot of people, is, is, is people to really open their, open their minds in a big way for a lot of people. And, and I understand it's asking a lot. But that's what, 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 what's, what we need to do in order to have a free society. We need, to, we, need to, we need to really stretch ourselves. That's what it's about, stretching ourselves. To be free, you need to stretch. To be tolerant, you need to stretch yourself. I understand it's difficult. I understand it, it, it asks people to come out of their you know, comfort zones and that. But, you know, that's what life's about, isn't it? Stretching and expanding. And, and uh, um, that's what... It is to, to, to be alive. <laughs> it's Count Dankula on YouTube. Everybody should subscribe.